Hello, welcome to another video. And this is a video where I'm going to be looking back at two products that I have purchased in the last six months because the novelty has now clearly worn off and it's time to give an honest appraisal of whether I think they were worth it. In a moment, we'll be talking about the device behind me, which is the iMac Pro. But first of all, let's talk about this. This is an Apple Watch Series 4. I bought this when they first came out in September 2018. So I've had it six months now at the time of recording in March 2019. And I bought it to replace this, which was an Apple Watch Series Zero. So this is actually the Series 4, is actually the fifth version of the Apple Watch. Well done Apple Marketing for great naming convention there, well done, didn't confuse anyone. Uh, but the two products really are quite different because the first one that I got, this Series Zero, is the aluminium version of the device and there's no cellular or anything like that in this. Whereas the stainless steel version that I got here, the Series 4, has cellular in it and I also got a very nice Melanese loop band. So when it comes to cost, the Series 4 that I bought was, well, I don't know, what, two and a half, nearly three times the price. So they're, they're sort of poles apart, really, when it comes to uh, comparing them. But of course, they are both watches. So did I go mad and spend way too much money buying an Apple Watch Series 4 when I could have just spent a similar amount of money buying a not quite so uh, elegant one, shall we say? Well, and the answer, the truth is actually, there's two parts to the answer which is if I hadn't spent so much money buying such a flashy Series 4, then I could have replaced this because this is my iPhone. Yes, I'm going off on a tangent. Uh, this is actually a Series, not a Series, this is an iPhone 6S Plus. And this device has been out, uh, goodness, this must be getting on for three and a half years, it'll be four years older, I suppose, will it be at the end of 2019? So I've had this a while. Now, being uh, an app developer, I kind of need to have, not it doesn't have to be brand new phone, but it needs to be a fairly recent phone. Um, this, of course, doesn't have anything like Face ID on it. This, this is the Touch ID version, and of course it's not full screen and all the other things that you get these days. And the camera is a bit dated. But actually, as a phone, this, this is pretty good. It does the job. I replaced the battery in it in early 2018 when the Apple were doing their offer. So, uh, I've got some longevity out of it, and you know, let's face it, I think people replace their devices far too quickly, really, anyway. So, so yeah, so I do want to hold on to it. However, if I hadn't got this Series 4 watch, and I probably would have got a 10s or a 10R in September 2018, maybe. But because the, the Series 4 was so expensive, that I uh, yeah, got this thing behind me as well. Uh, yeah, I just, I kind of couldn't justify spending any more money on any more gadgets. So that, but that's a tan, that's got nothing to do with the Series 4 itself. That's nothing to do with the watch. It's just kind of timing. I sort of wanted to replace the watch and the phone at the same time. And hopefully next time I come to replace these devices, that won't happen. But in its own right, yeah, okay, I could have saved quite a bit of money by getting an aluminium version of the Series 4, perhaps not getting the cellular, and not buying such a pricey band. Yes, I could have saved a load of money, but it kind of isn't that sort of purchase, really. I got the stainless steel because I think it looks really nice, and it does. It looks way better than the aluminium, in my opinion. I wanted cellular because I want to use this device when I go out for a run, and I want to hook it up with my AirPods, which I do, and I can leave my phone at home, which is great. Uh, and also, uh, it's, I suppose it's a bit like a bit of bling. It's a bit like a piece of jewellery. Uh, I've bought the watch because it kind of it feels good to wear. It's really comfortable. It's really fast and responsive to use, of course, uh, and it just looks nice. It's just like any piece of jewellery, really. Far too expensive, but you kind of think, Puh, why not? So I don't regret it, really, in a, in a word. I, I love the Apple Watch. I don't use many uh, third-party apps. In fact, I don't think I use any. I use just the, the ones that came with it. I use the Workout app on there for when I'm going out for a run. Uh, I use podcasts, again, mainly when I'm out uh, running, and music, of course, on here as well. Um, I use the HomeKit app on here. Uh, sometimes a shortcut if I want to just turn a light on, my Hue lights and I can't be bothered to use the switch or to shout at my phone. It's quite handy actually to just tap a button on here and, and activate a scene. It's quite handy to do that. 
Uh, but other than that, I don't really use, I don't use any third party apps and I don't really have any plans even to develop any apps for the phone, for the phone, for the watch particularly, even though I'm, I'm a developer. It's, it's a nice device to have. I don't regret it. It's a nice bit of bling, um, but it's certainly something I could live without. So the second device is the one over my left shoulder, which is the iMac Pro. Now, this is the very first all-in-one Mac that I owned. And right up to the day before I, I bought it, I never thought that I would go for an all-in-one. I just They just weren't on my radar at all. Uh, I'd always been a Mac Pro user up until this. I had a cheese grater. Then I replaced, I had that for years actually, I replaced that with a trash can. And then in uh, about November 2018, uh, I had the trash can hooked up to an LG 31 inch monitor. And that monitor just died on me, it just packed up. And I, I made a video actually about the thought processes that I went through, it's on the channel. And I, I was, wasn't sure what to do. I thought about, do I get a, a, a replace the monitor? Because I, I want a four or even 5K monitor. Do I just hire a monitor maybe or get a cheaper one just to see me through to when the new 2019 Mac Pro comes out? Or do I think about a Mac Mini, but then I'd still need to buy a monitor? All sorts of thoughts went through my mind. And the reason I hadn't even thought about the iMac Pro was because when it was announced the previous year in 2017, uh, the price tag was horrendous. I mean, anybody who saw that would have gone, how much for a computer? You must be mad. But when I looked at the Mac Mini and then I started looking at 5K monitors and I started adding, I thought, you know what? This stuff actually does cost, if with decent components, it does actually cost quite a bit of money. And then again, I got my calculator out and I worked out, well, actually, this iMac Pro, for what it is and the components that you get, actually isn't overpriced at all. Yes, it's expensive, but it's not overpriced. There are two very distinct but completely different concepts those if you think about it. So I found, I made the decision then, well you know what, I don't know what the 2019 Mac Pro is going to do. Chances are from the rumours, it's got, and still the rumours stand now in March 2019, uh, that this new Mac Pro is going to be mega and for really high throughput individuals, which I'm not really one of those. I need a mega machine, but I don't need an ultra mega machine. I'm not trying, you know, I don't want it to run the Hadron Collider for crying out loud. I just need something to do web development, design work, video editing, that kind of thing. And really, probably a laptop would do the trick, although that might get a bit hot. But this one, the iMac Pro, ticked all the boxes. And it, yeah, it was worth the money. So I, I dived in and I did, I bought one of these ultra expensive machines. I bought the base level uh, iMac Pro, so this is the entry level one. But unusually for Apple, their entry level machine here is actually really well specced up. It's got a good amount of SSD on it, of internal storage. It's got a good amount of RAM on it as well. Um, it's got all of the ports that all the models have on it, including 10 gigabit Ethernet, although I'm not using that. Uh, I'm just using gigabit Ethernet on my network at the moment. Um, it's got Thunderbolt 3 and uh, USB-C and all of these things on it that you, know, you can look at the specs yourself. But the fact is, do I regret buying this? You probably already know. No, I don't. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's, it's easily the best uh, computer that I have ever owned, let alone the best Mac. And uh, anything that I, can th that I want to throw at it, it will do. And it's amazing that such a small machine uh, can be that cool, that they can keep it that cool. It's bonkers. I don't know how they do it. Uh, very occasionally, very occasionally, if I'm really pushing it, I have heard the fans spin up in the back, but it tends to be only briefly, and then they very quickly spin down again. And that hasn't been a much of a worry for me, really. Uh, in all honesty, the, the Mac Pro that I had before, the trash can, I, I never don't think I very rarely heard the, the fan in that spin up, and even when it did, it was really quiet, quieter than the one in this, perhaps. But again, that, that, it's very few and far between the instances where the fan does run in this. And yeah, the, the screen, the build quality uh, is just out of this world. I'm totally sold on all-in-ones when uh, I, you know, six months ago, I never thought I, I'd ever buy an all-in-one. I thought I was always going to be a separate screen and computer guy that was just going to be me forever. So yeah, I don't regret it. It's a fantastic piece of kit. 
At the time of recording this video, Apple have just updated the iMac Pro. It's exactly the same, but they're just offering uh, more RAM configurations. So you can get it now with 256 gigabytes of RAM at a horrendous cost. It really is their RAM prices. Yeah, okay, everybody knows Apple's RAM prices are crazy expensive, really. And I think they, ought, they added some other um, build to order options as well, but the basic machine is exactly the same. And uh, yeah, I just want to say that it is great. It is a fantastic piece of kit. Uh, its build quality is fantastic, and I'm repeating myself now. Yeah, I don't regret it. It is a wonderful machine. And if you're thinking of buying a computer, the chances are that you won't want to get one of these. A standard iMac will be probably just fine, but it depends what you want to use it for. I spend a lot of time sitting at my iMac. Uh, I, it puts food on the table. Um, I'm, I'm a designer and a, a web developer and an app developer. I do all of these things. And really, this might sound like a silly point, but I want a computer that not only uh, works well and is functionally is good, but something that looks nice as well. It might sound a bit Jonathan Ive, but the, if you, something looks good, the tool that you're using to create what you're creating looks great as well, and the same applies maybe to the Apple Watch as well, which brings this all together, uh, then it, it kind of puts you in the right frame of mind. The people who designed the computer and designed the watch wanted it to be fantastic inside and out, and it kind of inspires you to be able to create good work as well. Yeah, does that sound a bit pretentious? Maybe a bit, but it doesn't alter the fact that this is a great piece of kit and I think it was worth every penny. So thanks for watching. This has been a very quick catch up on what I think of the Apple Watch Series 4 and the iMac Pro after owning both products for just a few months. And if you've enjoyed this video, uh, please subscribe for more. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.